Well, coming up on today's show, the standard range Model 3 is said to be four to six months away. Jaguar remove a safety feature because it's said to distract pedestrians. And your answers to this week's question of the week. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It's Sunday, the 21st of October 2018. It's Martin Lee here and I've been through every EV story I can find, as always to bring you the most important ones. Thank you to myev.com to help make this show. Uh, They've built the world's first marketplace all about electric vehicles. It's specifically designed to buy and sell EVs and learn and research about them as well. Totally free marketplace, and it really simplifies the buying and selling process. If you're in North America, go check it out. Well, we'll start with the Model 3. And Mark Kane at Inside EV said over the weekend that Tesla recently announced it's expanding its Model 3 family with the new surprise battery, the mid-range battery. Nobody even had a rumour that this thing was coming. They also removed the rear-wheel drive long-range version. So the next question is, when will we finally see the standard range version? Well, the official answer, we now have it four to six months away from today. So that puts us in a window of February to April next year, if there are no delays. Now, they were always saying Q1 2019, so... You know, April's going into Q2 slightly. That's not that much of a delay. The standard battery Model 3, they say, will be rated for 220 miles. That's 354 kilometres. While the mid-range and the long-range models are 260 and 310 miles. This new mid-range battery that came out just surprised so many people. As a new option... Everyone thought it was going to be standard range and long range. But no, the new mid-range battery, as announced a couple of days ago, 260 miles. Well, the price of the Model 3 standard range should start at $35,000 before incentives and before you click the options button. So you're having it in black with nothing extra if you want to pay your $35,000. The mid-range starts at $45,000. And the long range, uh, well, the long range rear-wheel drive was $49,000 with some obligatory equipment packages. Well, Tesla said this, as Model 3 production and sales continue to grow rapidly, we've achieved a steady volume in manufacturing capacity, allowing us to diversify our product and offer even more to our customers. Our new mid-range battery is being introduced this week in the US and Canada to better meet the varying range needs of many customers eager to own a Model 3. And our delivery estimate for customers who have ordered the standard battery is four to six months. And finally, an Elon tweet. We do love an Elon tweet. He says this, and I quote, We came up with a new design that achieves the same outcome. That's actually lighter, better, cheaper. And we'll be introducing that around the end of the year. Probably reach volume production in Q1. That will make the car lighter, better and cheaper to uh, achieve a higher range. They are constantly improving, not only themselves, but the car as well. Somebody who's changed something is Jaguar. Well, Jaguar's removed a safety feature from its new iPace because it's proved a distraction to pedestrians. The Audible Vehicle Alert System, the AVAS, uh, is designed to warn visually impaired pedestrians when an EV is approaching as the cars are silent at low speeds, according to the UK Independent newspaper. Jaguar then developed a new sound, which is emitted from a speaker behind the front grille. The alert can be heard in every direction and can't be switched off. Jaguar engineers worked for four years to develop AVAS and consulted with charity, uh, the charity Guide Dogs for the Blind uh, to ensure real people are at the heart of our product testing, they say. However, they've now removed it, according to The Independent, because it's distracting all pedestrians, because it sounds like a UFO. People have been trying to work out where that noise is coming from, looking up, looking around, not knowing it's a car. I find that story hard to believe. I mean, it's not like it's a kind of crazy UFO out of this world noise. You know, it's not Martians landing, but the newspaper reckons the Jaguar have dropped the feature completely because it distracts everybody. Look, we need to make sure that visually impaired people and the guide dogs that are trained to help them and the guide dogs that train for a long time uh, know when and where they can cross the road and help people go about their normal business uh, d- despite being visually impaired to ensure they have a-, a normal life so we need to make sure that evs are, are, are sensitive to those uh, those people but also 
It's a little bit weird, isn't it? So, uh, designing these strange noises to come out of cars. I, I don't, I don't know what the answer is, by the way. But they say the Jaguar I Pace noise was a bit like a UFO. Uh, the um, well, everyone's got different noises coming from their car, and of course, next year it will be mandatory in the United States. I just don't know what the answer is. Whether it's like a, the same noise for all cars, whether it needs to be regulated, I don't know. Well, a quick three headlines from Electrek then that we caught up with over the weekend because yesterday was an interview show uh, with actually lots of emails coming in over the weekend saying people really enjoyed that double interview yesterday. You can go back and listen to uh, Hubject and Recharge if you want to have a, a little listen to the interview yesterday on a Saturday special. Well, three quick headlines. Firstly, Tesla's removed the full self-driving capability package because of confusion. Uh, A comment from uh, one of the readers, Kip, I think sums it up nicely. He says, this is how I see it from Tesla's perspective. Why leave money on the table? He says, I think initially offering full self-driving was a way for Tesla to get extra money. However, as most customers weren't purchasing it, and he says, I'm the the exception, it may make, make sense to just not offer it for now. Simplify the order post process and reduce the questions. I see removing full self-driving as a huge show of confidence because Tesla's been charging three to four thousand dollars when you buy the feature with a new car. As they get closer to full self-driving being a reality, or well, they can charge the aftermarket price of five thousand dollars or maybe even more. Uh, there's no new price listed for full self-driving on the website. Uh, when it becomes an option. For an over-the-air upgrade, again, why leave money on the table? Very interesting point. Very interesting question from one of the readers. Uh, The second headline is that the Model 3 got quicker. Well, it didn't actually get quicker, but there was a slight detail change on the website. Uh, Tesla uh, started to advertise the 0-60 time of the Model 3 performance as 3.3 seconds, not 3.5 seconds, as nearly all of the reviewers and magazines and websites were all getting 3.3. So they've lowered it to match those. And finally, Tesla's now maintaining a production rate of 1,000 vehicles a day. Fred Electric says that according to a reliable source familiar with production, Tesla's produced about 6,800 cars in the last week. That's about 4,800 Model 3s. And Tesla's, uh, at the moment, uh, made about 12,200 Model 3s uh, for the, since the start of the quarter. What are we on? 21st of October today. Uh, just over 18,300 vehicles for the quarter as of early this morning, this article being written yesterday. Well, the biggest takeaway is that Tesla is now able to maintain a production of 1,000 vehicles a day, uh, 7,000 a week almost, and 5,000 Model 3s every single week. Okay, let's get on to your answers then to this week's question of the week. I love this. Thank you very much for answering this week's question of the week. It seems that some of the really big batteries that are coming out in the new EVs aren't that efficient for one reason or another. Uh, People have been doing range tests like uh, Bjorn. I love Bjorn Nyland's video uh, channel on YouTube. And some of these new cars that are coming out, they've got bigger batteries, but the efficiency's a bit rubbish in terms of... Uh, kilometers per per watt hour and some of the smaller batteries that are around like the Hyundai Ioniq really efficient so actually if you could choose which one would it be would you go for the big battery or would you go for the efficient battery well we'll start with David now David Allen has always got really good input to the podcast and he says like many questions it depends smiley face well it does i mean this was a bit of a trick question if i'm honest with you he says there are six possible situations as he sees it right number one if you're single and don't do long distance travel go for a small efficient battery and sufficient range to handle your commute if you're married and you both work go with a long range and an efficient short range Uh, whoever has the longest commute gets the efficient car and as long as it meets the criteria above uh, the long range car should be big enough for vacations right his third point is when kids enter the equation it's all about which car is the safest well that would be the model three then the fourth situation if you don't have access to charging at home david says and rely on charging at work or fast charging you probably want to go for a really big battery to cut down on the number of times you charge and then there's two future considerations work trucks pickups vans involved in the construction and repair industry want to be able to tap their battery to run their tool so no matter how efficient the battery is you want a nice big battery if you're going to be running your tools off it and finally when vehicle to home and vehicle to grid become common again a big battery becomes important if you want to sell 
electricity back to the grid. You want a nice big battery so you can sell more power and maintain a decent range when you want to go somewhere. If you're looking to use your EV as a backup power source for your home, again, the big battery is important. Doesn't matter how efficient the motor, inverter and all the battery kind of stuff is if you're using it for other purposes. Well, David says, thank you for your effort on the show. Lisa and I listen to you each morning on the way to work. Thank you, David. Right, let's go through some of your comments then. And we'll start with the first comment that we had in from David Nye, who is uh, listening down under. And he says that in Australia, the distances are great and the charges very limited. In my, opi- in my opinion, he says efficiency is paramount, paramount, but for now, they need the big battery in Australia. Jack O'Kelly or Oakley says this. He says, at the moment, uh, my 80-mile BMW i3 is limiting. 200 to 250 miles would be perfect. 300 miles, outstanding. But in tomorrow's EVs, well, you need more efficiency. Efficient battery, efficient lighting, heat pumps, efficient heating, efficient wiper motors. Uh, We are in a transition period, he says. Uh, And he says that um, auto companies are taking EV seriously, have great engineers working on the problem, and it's great for all EV fans. Hello to Eric. Thank you very much, Eric, for your email. Uh, He's been listening to the podcast for the last few months and he likes how it's unbiased. Well, 99% of the time it's hopefully unbiased. He says, for your question of the week, range or efficiency, uh, the to be released larger battery leaf or the Bolt or the Kona and Nero all have big batteries, but actually are pretty efficient for their size. You're right. I mean, especially the Kia e-Nero. Quite a big car, but still very efficient. I like what you're saying there. He says, I think range and cost are important, uh, especially with efficiency being two to four times greater than a fossil vehicle. Thank you very much, Eric. Hello to Andrew Jacobs. I want efficiency the most, but efficiency is useless. If the battery is just too small, it's range that he wants. Uh, He says, uh, thank you very much, Andrew Jacobs. Hello to Christopher Davis on the email. He says, why do you have to choose? Actually, because these days, faster rapid charging allows for less downtime and bigger batteries allow for more distance. Efficiencies being greater allow all of the above to be even better. Here in the state, southwest Missouri, we drive further on the weekends than it would seem most of you do on the other side of the pond. Yes, Christopher, you're absolutely right. You seem to do more miles uh, than we do poodling around. Hello to Andre. Andre Gil da Costa says, I would take efficiency over pure battery size. Our car is for commuting. So, as little money as possible spent to get to work and back. In fact, that was the reason why I favoured purchasing the Ionique over the Leaf. Over a yearly period, he worked out €300 more expensive to buy the Leaf than the Ionique, and he sent me a spreadsheet. Wow, you've done all of your sums. Amazing. Thank you for that. Hello to Dan Hersher. Uh, Dan says, I greatly enjoy listening to your show. I anticipate every new episode. For me, the bigger battery is more important right now because I live in rural northern Wisconsin and charging options are few and far between. A more efficient but smaller battery means nothing if I can't get to a charger. Uh, We charge our 2015 Nissan Leaf at home exclusively because there are no DC fast chargers and very few level 2 chargers within an 80 mile range. A big battery would allow us to reach the fast chargers. Ah, Good point, Dan. Hello to Victor. Victor Wood says we asked ourselves exactly the same question when we were looking to buy an EV. In the end, the limitation was miles per bladder and a smaller battery, which was less cost, than a bigger battery with longer charging time is the one they went for. Efficiency wins. They bought the Ionic and don't have a single regret. Good man. Hello to Neil. Neil Stewart says, I'm guessing people's answers this week depend on how they use their EVs. Well, Neil, you're absolutely right. Like I say, it was a bit of a trick question because there's so many variables in there. He says, when I get mine in November, it's purely to get me to work and back six days a week, have a seven kilowatt home charger, and there are chargers at Media City in Salford if necessary. Uh, So should I need to do a long journey, we would use my wife's fossil Grand Scenic Diesel. In an ideal world... Well, yeah, Uh, a large battery with an efficient motor is the holy grail. But at the moment, it's out of reach. Right, three more. Hello to Andrew Murphy, who says an EV that's more efficient is more important to him than a big battery because they're cheaper to make, have fewer materials. They're often smaller, these small, efficient batteries, and it would be better for the environment. 
Gary Clark has chipped in with a really good point. I would love to see a high efficiency car like the Ionic have a bigger battery, which would push it into the 200 plus mile range. Well, Gary, that is coming soon. No official press release as such, uh, but a senior member of the management at Hyundai was on a, a, a test drive sort of thing. I think it was like a, a drive with inside EVs and they were talking about it. And this person did reveal that a longer range Ionic is on the cards. And finally, uh, no, that's it. Actually, we've gone through them all. Thank you very much to all of your answers to this week's question of the week. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and bash out a little reply on your phone or your iPad or your, your computer or something. Thank you so much for joining in. We always read out your questions, uh, your answers to question of the week on a Sunday. And then we always set a brand new question for you to answer anytime. Well, now, if you want to, but anytime over the next week. And here is the brand new question of the week set by myev.com. Putting range aside, because everyone wants more range, let's face it, putting range aside, so you can't say that, what's lacking in today's EVs? Is it design, more options, a choice of models, a lack of education to know exactly which one to buy? Is it cost or even social pressure that you don't want to be the first person in your street or town to own an EV? Uh, we would love to know what's really stopping you from switching. Tell us what's lacking in today's EVs. And you can't say range. Thank you very much to the 103 patrons of the podcast who uh, joined up at patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. 271 previous episodes of the podcast now to enjoy online for free. If you want to download that from or any of those from the usual places you get podcasts. And if you want to catch me on the socials, just search evnewsdaily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.